Okay, so as you know, today we're gonna be installing recessed lighting into the ceiling. Um, these are gonna be shallow mount recessed lights. which essentially means you don't need much clearance. You need like a half an inch of clearance to install these, which is really nice because a lot of times if you have to uh, use the housings with a regular recess light, you need like at least six inches. And a lot of times you just don't have that. So the brand we're gonna be using is uh, Halo. Um, I picked them up at uh, Home Depot and these are the six inch. They also come in four inch. A lot of people are steering towards the four inch right now because they're just more aesthetically pleasing, I guess. But I prefer the six inch because you have to install less lights and they're more powerful. So as far as spacing goes, uh, you're supposed to put the six inch preferably five to six feet apart. Um, not in the row, but like from row to row. So these um, that we're gonna be doing are about six and a half feet apart. These are LEDs that are gonna last you 22 years. So yeah, um, so let's, let's uh, this brand also has five different colors to choose from. It goes all the way from 2700K up to 5000K, which I believe is Kelvin. I could be wrong. Um, so let me open this up for you and show you what we're working with. Now, what I'm gonna show you today is how to install these in a ceiling where you can use, uh, it's an already finished ceiling. So, so in the box, it comes with this, which is gonna be your template to cut out the, the hole if you don't already have a hole. It comes with the actual LED panel. You see how thin that is? So essentially this goes through the drywall when the hole is and these clips hold it in. Um, and this is the box right here where you make all your connections. So this literally opens up and then it's got a spot. You literally just match the wires up white, black, and obviously this copper is your ground. That's what comes in the box. Um, I'm gonna be doing three of these right now. I've already installed six of them as you can probably tell. Right there, there's three and then there's one right there and there's two more um so really brighten the room up <clears throat> what i do i'm doing 5000 which is daylight setting so you want to go ahead and just switch that to the daylight setting and now we're gonna get on what kind of tools you're gonna need for the job you're gonna need a stud finder drywall saw need a whoa you're possibly <laughs> that almost cut my nose off you're possibly gonna need a uh fiberglass saw a good pair of wire strippers a good pair of dikes and potentially a pair of pliers. Nice tape measure, a pencil that's flat so it doesn't roll away, power drill with this. Uh, what this does, it's really cool. This is made by Klein Tools. Yes, spelled the same way as my last name. No relation, unfortunately, but we're doing six inch. So we set these to six inch. And what this does, when you drill to the ceiling, this apparatus catches all the drywall dust. So you essentially save not making a huge mess, which is a plus when you're doing anything that has to do with drywall because drywall dust is very, very fine. It gets everywhere, it's a pain in the clean. Part of my French, so we need that. You're gonna need a 14-2 power wire, however much you're measuring out to. And then this, you're gonna need, and what is this? It's a really long, flexible pole. This lets you get into spaces and run wire, cross joists, up walls. This is a six foot pole. Um, you can pick these up again at Home Depot. This is made by Klein as well. This glows in the dark, so if you're in the ceiling, you don't know where it's at, it's glowing. So this, if you have this, it makes the job so much easier. You could use a coat hanger, but trust me, this works way better. It's worth the $22, go pick one up. So those are the tools you're gonna need. And something I gotta tell you about it, anything that has to do with um, tools, if you have the right tool for the job, it makes any job easy. So let me just throw that out there for you. So let's go ahead and get on with the installation. Okay, so the first step of this job, what we want to do is we want to find a breaker that controls the lights out there because um, we do not want to have any live power going when we're doing this job. Um, it's number 18, which is a TV room in the basement. So number 18 is right here. Flip that breaker off and we'll get onto the install. Um, just so you know, I have lights with batteries, so there's no power going to these strips right now. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to take them down this old track because we're going to be putting a light right here right here and roughly right over there spaced out so what we're going to do is take this down and we'll get on to the next step so if you have an already existing light where you want to put your recessed lighting this is what you're going to do is take this light out and leave the gap okay so as you can see right here um we have this is the wires that are coming from this so we need to take this panel off right now so in order to do that we need to get the screwdriver and just undo these screws. 
these wires are not live. Um, you can test them if you want. I know they're not because I tested them earlier. So if you have a multimeter, that's when you're going to want to test them is right now. Okay. Okay. So now we want to measure where the lights are going to go. Obviously the light right here, this is going to be a six inch hole cut out. Um, we're going to do that, but we want to know where the other ones go. So what we're going to do is, um, we want them to be, uh, 31 inches from the wall to here. So we're going to measure 31 inches, which is right there. Mark it. Then we're going to make sure it's centered up with this. And we're going to measure how far it is from the wall to here. Okay. It's about 38 inches to the center. So then we're going to have the mark here for 31. We're going to measure the 38 on center and mark it. And that's where we're going to center our hole. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So do that with all three and then we can get drilling because the first thing we do is drill the holes. The second thing we do is put the wires through. The third thing is hook the wires up and then we turn the power on. Hopefully everything works. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to drill the hole. Um, so again, we want to have this tool, which catches all the, uh, drywall dust. So this is going to drill a perfect six inch, six inch hole. So this drill bit literally goes right where we made that mark where they cross at 31 and 38 inches. Boom. That's how it's done. You're welcome. Yeah. Now the next one's not going to be quite as simple as this because we can't use this tool on the already existing hole that we need. So we're going to have to show you the other method, which is fine. This is the easy method. This is a little bit harder, but in a little messier. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Because this method is a little messy. We're going to go ahead and take a towel or a sheet or a plastic tarp, and we're going to lay it on the ground and on anything we don't want salt, uh, salt dust, uh, drywall dust on. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Okay. As you can see, we covered the TV up in the floor right below where we're going to be making the, uh, making the hole or the roof incision as you want to call it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some, uh, we're going to take some electrical tape and the template they have right here. So we're going to go ahead and make sure it's center. We're going to tape the template up like so. See, you could use duct tape or something, but it, when you peel it off, it's going to actually rip the, uh, could rip the paint with it. And then you're going to paint the ceiling, which we're going to do anyway, but, and do a couple patches here and there where they're uh, hold over. Those are simple fixes, but you don't want to have to paint if you don't have to. Now, what you're going to need is this, is the drywall saw we were talking about. This is going to cut out the, um, the hole. Now, this is the perfect diameter. Again, you don't know the wires are here, so you don't want to cut the wire. So I'm just going to go ahead and start <laughs> and just follow the line. So there you go. And as you can see, the huge mess that we left behind, which we're gonna literally just pick that blanket up, take it outside and shake it out. And uh, yeah, but there's no dust other than there. And so now we get on to the next step. Uh, you can actually take that tape down, which we'll probably do right now. Okay, so now's when we're gonna run, wanna run the wires. So obviously we have this tool right here. Um, because we're not going that far, and there's no insulation in this part of the ceiling for some reason. I don't know why there was on the other sections I did. This probably won't, we won't need it, but it, it helps because we can literally watch this. Put this up to, at the ceiling and you scoot it across. And now I can literally tape this to this section right here and pull it through to the right spot. So I don't have to worry about fishing my arm through there. Um, which is really cool. So if you don't have, if you have easily line of sight, like I do right now, you probably don't need that tool. But like when I had insulation up there, I couldn't just put my arm through because obviously uh, the insulation was blocking the wire from moving. So yeah, so that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go ahead and get the wires ran through and pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do, is we wanna strip the wires with just this, this is gonna do, we'll put this in. It takes that off, pretty, pretty cool actually. 
and this comes back. I want to put a little bit more, so I take the dikes and just kind of go like this and cut up a little bit. You can use a razor blade too if you want, but I prefer not because you can slip and cut your finger pretty bad. And that goes up. And we pull this paper back, which I guess is the insulation. And we cut the rest off. That's about enough wire we can leave. Then we want to go ahead and strip these again. Um, we do not very much, about that much on the white and that much on the black. What we want to do with the light is we want to separate the light from the box. So that unscrews like so and it plug, pulls apart. So we put the white and set it to the side. So now we're going to make our connections. Um, so as there's a, a punch out here and a punch out here. We're gonna uh, use the punch out on this side. It doesn't really matter what side you use, but to, in order to do that, what you literally do is you take your flathead like so, and you just kind of twist. And it comes, comes off, and that becomes trash. And the cool thing about these connectors, um, these literally just push in. I'm not gonna do it yet because I'm not in the box, but let's go ahead and put the wire in the box, okay. This is how easy it is to set this up. Now again, this wire is not live yet. So we match the colors. Black goes into black. So that literally goes into this empty space. And now that's in. Uh, the white goes into the white. And that's in. And then the ground, which is the copper, goes into the copper. It doesn't matter which hole on here it goes in. And then we fold them down. And then we close the box up and we make sure it's on the right temperature. Then we plug the light in and there's a notch and then screw it down. Now these are waterproof, uh, not waterproof, but they're rated for damp conditions. Then you literally just go ahead and put this on top of the ceiling and we're gonna let this light just hang here right now. And we're gonna move on to the next one. So that is how you do it. Um, the next one is gonna have three connections because it's gonna be, that's where the actual power is coming in. So this is the live wire that goes, connects in. This will connect in and this will connect in. So it like kind of runs in a, in a row. So we're gonna go ahead and just, I guess, move this over here and we'll show you how to connect that one, which is a little bit more difficult. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna actually gonna strip the wires, get those all done. Okay, now those are all stripped. We're going to make the connections. Um, obviously we're gonna punch out both sides this time. So go ahead and do that. <clears throat> This is the live wire. We're gonna go ahead and put this one. We're gonna hook that one up first. And then I'm getting black to black. Make sure it, there it goes. Kind of, you can kind of feel it snap in when you do that. Snaps in and the ground snaps in. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put this white one through this hole. I wouldn't put more than two through the same hole. Um, just, just a heads up there. Again, black to black. Snaps in. It's gonna get pretty tight in here. Pretty tight squeeze. White to white. And the ground. Come on. Now obviously you can't do more than three wires because that's all the connections it has. You probably could, but it snaps in. Go ahead and put this through this side, back to black. Okay, now they're all in. My fingers are gonna fall off. <coughs> We're gonna have to I'm gonna go ahead and push this down. Make sure the box is closed. And make sure it's on the right Calvin setting. There's the box. Put it in the roof. Out of, out of. <sighs> We're gonna have to hook the light up. Hook the light up, ah, find the notch. There's the notch. Screw it on. And we do this with the last one and then we're ready to turn them on. So we're gonna go ahead and put that one together. We should know how to do now and we'll get on with the reveal. Now that we have all the lights hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and turn the breaker back on. So now if they worked, the switch should be on, which it is and we're gonna hit the power. Boom, they lit up. So they are so bright. <laughs> 
So now we're gonna have to have to put them up in the ceiling. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so in order to put them in the ceiling, like we said, you put the box on the ceiling, you bend the tabs up, you bend the tab up, and it should just slide right in. Oh, that's kinda, and boom, that's in, this one. Again, shallow mount, this never would've worked. There's a, there's a cross beam here. I mean, we obviously gotta cut it out, but make sure it's the right Kelvin setting. It is. Go ahead and go like this. Okay, and the last but not least, it's the right setting. Go ahead and put this up in the ceiling. Line that up there on the roof. And voila, so let me turn these lights off. Okay, that's off. Turn this one off. Now for the reveal. I can actually have the app on my phone, which is kind of cool. And they should light up. Boom. They're all the same color, the whole room. So that is how you install recessed lighting into your ceiling that's already existing. Um, again, these are shallow mount, so you'll need about a half an inch depth to put these in. But this whole room, these three, those three, those three, so nine lights in total, took me about an hour and a half. So I hope that uh, shows you, you got, anybody can do it um, with a little bit of, uh, I guess, courage because electric, a lot of times people are afraid to mess with it. Um, as long as the circuit's off, you're fine. Uh, obviously test it with the multimeter first to make sure it's really off, but <clears throat> sorry, man. My ass is acting up, but if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up, hit the bell notification so you know when the rest of our videos come out. Um, we do a lot of different kind of videos, cooking videos, electronic videos, vlogs, so. This is for life. Peace and you're welcome. Happy installing.